In this topic, we're going to discuss fermentation and fermenters. So we're going to look at industrial fermenters and why fermentation is commercially important. We're going to compare continuous culture to batch culture. And then we're going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of continuous culture and batch culture. And then finally, we're going to touch on penicillin, enzymes, and mycoprotein. Microorganisms are used to produce metabolites industrially. So they're grown in vats or fermenters. And they can either be grown in batch or continuous cultures, depending on the metabolites required. The main function of a fermenter is to provide a sterile, controlled environment for the growth of the microorganism or the animal cell to obtain a desired product. The vessel should be capable of being operated aseptically for a number of days. So let's have a look at the features of a fermenter. A fermenter is a large stainless steel vessel with a capacity between 10,000 to 500,000 cubic decimeters. So it's got a water jacket that has circulating water in it to control its temperature. It's also got a series of ports that allow materials to be added or extracted at suitable stages of the process. Here you can see a series of flat blades that can be rotated. This ensures that the contents of the fermenter are constantly mixed to keep the bacterial cells from settling out at the bottom. And it also ensures that the nutrients are kept in contact with the bacterial cells. If oxygen is needed, it can be forced through tiny holes in a plate at the bottom of the tank. There are a series of ports that allow materials to be added or removed at suitable stages of the process. Probes are used to monitor the, uh, the conditions, such as temperature and pH, which can be adjusted to bring them back to the optimum if necessary. So why is fermentation commercially important? This is because it can be used to produce a number of important things. For example, microbial cells or biomass as a product. For example, baker's yeast, lactobacillus. Microbial enzymes, for example, catalase, amylase, protease, pectinase, glucose isomerase. Microbial metabolites. So primary metabolites include ethanol, citric acid, vitamins. Secondary metabolites, for example, antibiotics. Recombinant products, for example, insulin, HBV, interferon, GCSF. And biotransformations, for example, phenylacetylcarbonyl. So the two main methods of cultivation using a fermenter, you've got batch culture and continuous culture. Batch culture involves loading the fermenter with all the necessary materials, allowing the bacteria to grow and produce their products, so nutrients are not added, nor are the products removed during this process. Air is allowed in and waste gases are removed. The process is then stopped at a specific stage and the product is removed. The ferment is then cleaned and sterilized so that it's ready for the next batch. Continuous cultivation involves a constant stream of nutrients being added and the products being continuously removed over a period of many weeks. This process is quicker than batch cultivation because there's no downtime between each batch. Continuous cultivation is, however, only suited to the production of biomass or metabolites that are associated with growth. Right, let's compare them. So continuous culture, it's an open system. Batch culture, it's a closed system. 
Continuous culture is used for making metabolites in the log phase, and batch culture is used for making secondary metabolites in the stationary phase. So the products are constantly made and removed, whereas in batch culture they're removed when the concentration is high. In continuous culture, the material is constantly added. Everything is in excess except for one limiting factor. In the batch culture, no new material is added. Continuous culture, the nutrient levels um, are the same throughout the procedure. In the batch culture, the nutrients are depleted. Waste is removed in the continuous culture. In the batch culture, no waste is removed. Continuous culture, waste products are constant. Batch culture, the waste products do accumulate. Continuous culture, inflow is equal to outflow, so the volume is constant. In the batch culture, the volume does change. Continuous culture, the growth rate is regulated by a supply of nutrients and it's um, <clears throat> the bacteria kept in the log phase. In batch culture, the growth rate maximum is in the stationary phase. Continuous culture, the product is constantly made and can be removed. In batch culture, the product is removed at the end of a certain time period and then a new batch is produced. Okay, let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages. <clears throat> so continuous culture involves smaller vessels because of the higher productivity in the log phase. Batch culture, you have larger vessels. Continuous culture, it's more expensive to set up. Batch culture, it's cheaper. Continuous culture, it's good for producing enzymes in the log phase. Batch culture, secondary metabolites are produced in the stationary phase. Continuous culture requires specialized equipment and staff to operate it, so it's difficult to get the exact conditions needed, whereas batch culture, it's easy to set up and operate. Continuous culture, the productivity and biomass are high, so it will be cost-effective when running, whereas batch culture, it's run in batches, so each time you need to start from the beginning. Continuous culture, any contaminant or contamination will affect the long-term production, whereas in batch culture, any contamination will only affect one batch. And then finally, in continuous culture, the microbes produce foam and cells that can block the pipes. In the batch culture, the right conditions for secondary metabolite production are difficult to obtain. Okay, some examples of fermentation. If you have a look at this graph here, where this stationary phase is where antibiotics are made. Antibiotics are made when the nutrients are running out and the growth of the producer organism is slowing down rather than at its maximum. They are therefore secondary metabolites and their production takes longer than primary metabolites. So it also means continuous fermentation techniques are unsuitable to make antibiotics because nutrients are constantly added and so growth never slows or becomes stationary. Therefore, antibiotics are produced in batch culture. Enzymes, on the other hand, are secreted when the bacteria are in the log phase. They are thus produced in continuous culture. If the enzymes are made in batch culture, the microorganisms are removed by filtration and the enzyme is purified and concentrated. At IGCSE level, you learned about the meat substitute mycoprotein. So it's made from the fungus fusarium and a medium containing glucose syrup with gaseous ammonia. 
The initial product has a nucleic acid content of up to 15%, so this needs to be reduced before it's consumed. Since it has to be made in quantity, it's made using continuous cultivation. And that concludes our lesson. The end.